Now, I have mentioned before, most of the cutting I do, you know, when I'm knocking them down and even cutting them up, I do with that old 55 Rancher. Because I really like that saw, and it's relatively light. And I run a 20 inch bar on it, and that's all I need for most of the wood that I cut around here. This 372 was really my intention and what I use it for most of the time is for the ripping. You know, there it's nice, it doesn't take as much out of the saw as it would on a smaller saw. So it works good for that, though it is a good saw. So this last week when I was cutting all that ash, you know, I decided to use this mainly because this has got that full wrap bar on it. Now that's something I put on after I bought it. That and these, what they call West Coast dogs, are much longer. Now I found this to be very handy, uh, which is why I was using it, because there was a lot of undergrowth where we were cutting these. So a lot of times you'd get in awkward positions where it wasn't always convenient to run the saw this way. Well, with a full wrap, I could run the saw this way. You know, it just gave me a little more options. And, like I said, these were standing dead. So the bark on them was very loose. Well, these longer dogs help because they chew through that, that bark to get to the wood. Better than the, the short dogs that came on it. So it worked really good for that, though I do really notice the weight. Uh, you know, when you're stumbling around in all them vines and stuff, uh, the 55 is a, a handy size saw. And even on this one, I only run a 20 inch bar in that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, I really I don't often have to run the 24. Though I might uh, switch it out for what I'm doing here now is cutting these long pieces in half. Then I can get under them with the bale forks and bring them into the yard. They're too long to come into the yard, I'd have to drag them in. But this way I can just, by cutting them in half, I can get them on that bale fork. But, uh, you know, I talked about this full wrap bar when I put it on, and it's a regular husk worn apart, but for some reason they don't sell saws here with the full wrap bar, they just aren't available. Uh, I imagine you could special order them or something, but I've never even seen one before. But I think out on the West Coast, it's a common thing. Well, that is a regular Husqvarna part, and they're available for all the different models. Uh, it's like $44 or something for the bar and the, the West Coast dogs. But I like to, to stick with regular Husqvarna parts. But we'll take a look at a part that came in the mail today. This was a... <laughs> on my model 51, which is basically the same as my 55. I accidentally stumbled on it one day, and I broke the, the brake thing. You know, it's just a plastic piece, so I was surprised to see it break. I've never had one go bad before. Well, the regular Husqvarna part was like $60 for that cover with that brake lever on it. Well, I'd sit there wait and try to find a saw. You know, for that price you can buy a damaged saw. But in looking on eBay, there was a Chinese replacement part. Well, we'll take a look at this Chinese replacement and see what it looks like. So I kind of... You know, it's just a flat cover, and that arm that goes up to run the brake. Eh, looks suitable. You know, my main concern would be... Oh yeah, it looks identical, really. Uh, Weight-wise, because... You know, they have a inertia thing on them. <laughs> this ain't a good sign. Just did my mess around with it. I already broke a little piece of plastic off of it. <laughs> you know, plastic in cold weather isn't the ideal thing. But they do have 
ideal that works, you know, if it kicks back, the weight of the handle is supposed to lock the brake. <laughs> I don't know about this one. I think it might work as a cover, but I don't know about brake function wise. Yeah, I don't know. I think she should reset. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that thing will even go on there over the clutch drum. Now, before I bend her too much, I better bring her in the house and wind her up. Yeah, this might have been a waste of money. You know, I'm sure it would work as a cover, but just the way this band is laying in here doesn't look quite right to me either. You know, it might drag on the clutch drum. But like I say, I, you know, I bought, I'm always looking for like the 51 or 55s that I can buy for parts. And unless they drop a tree on them, usually this cover is fine. You know, the normal thing people will do will uh, seize them up, you know, run a bad mixture and cook the cylinder. Which you, there again, you can buy replacements out of China, you know, but... It's not something I like to do with the uh, saw I use a lot. But <laughs> I really got my doubts about this one. But this was, I think, $19 shipped from China. But I think you get what you pay for. And like I say, I think this plastic is not going to handle the, the low temperatures. I have my doubts. If it's an identical one, well, maybe I can salvage. Because the other one just broke right here. So I was on the ground, I happened to try to step over it and had these big boots on, I stumbled and I hit it. It must have been just right, because I've never broke one before, but snapped that plastic right there. So we'll see. If it's an identical model, maybe I could salvage just the, the lever part off it. But you don't look too promising. I swear you can make a whole saw out of Chinese stuff. Well, they do. They make Chinese saws that look like regular Husqvarna's or steels. But I'm going to hack some of this stuff up. But uh, I just thought I'd mention, you know, like these aren't aftermarket parts. They are regular Husqvarna factory parts. And well worth the money that $44 or something like that just for the ability to cut like that you know uh, it just makes it so much handier when you're in tight quarters or like when I say there was just a lot of undergrowth in there a lot of times to get to the trunk of a tree I'd have to cut you know clear a bunch of vines and little willows and gooseberry bushes were just clogged up just to get to the tree so Many times I was cutting with the wrong side, you know, cutting it upside down. But it works fine that way. Uh, actually, a pretty good investment. And I have found, uh, I kind of like it for when I'm doing the ripping, too. It's kind of nice. It's, it makes it a little more solid. You know, otherwise you get a lot of, of flex on the, on the bar when you're just pushing on the bar. And I think it protects the saw a bit, too. Maybe wouldn't have broke my brake lever off the other one if I had one of them on it. So I should actually look and see if they make one for the 55. But I really, that 55 Rancher has been a wonderful saw. Now this 372 is a great saw. But like I say, for most of the stuff, I use that 55 Rancher. Just a nice size, uh, powerful enough, runs a long enough bar. Nothing wrong with the old ones. In fact, you know, because the old ones were made in Sweden and the new ones are being made here, the, the new, like the 455 or whatever they call it now. Anytime you see the little primer bulb, you got to have doubts about them because they're usually the, the ones being made here. And I really, I like the ones, the XP's that are made in Sweden. That's really the way to go. So I, this little one that I had along and was using as a backup, so that's got one of them primers and that's the one that's built here yeah, it doesn't say assembled in USA this actually is a fairly good software that what I paid for it which was very little but uh, 
I always like to carry a second saw in case you have a problem jamming one in. Uh, you know, get a pinch to the tree, especially these dead ones, because you know, the standard dead ones are, are a little unpredictable. Uh, in the first place, they're really well balanced. They want to sit down there. You know, I, I was using the wedge way more than I normally have to. But they were, you know, you'd cut almost all the way through. They didn't want to hinge over. And then with dead wood, when they hinge, it just bang, they go. You know? And I've had them, it was so thick with brush in there where they, they wouldn't go over and they would sit down on the saw. Which is why when I'm cutting in something like that, I use my old bar. Uh, this one, in fact, is is actually getting more to the part where I have to rebuild this one, you know, cut the grooves down and stuff, but uh, I knew that going into it. But it worked fine for what I was doing. But I don't cut trees down with a new bar because you're taking a chance on the bar. I save the new bars for the ripping where, you know, it's more, it matters more if you've got a really good fit in here. But no, like I say, this one I can file that groove down and I've got that device that, that rebuilds, that pinches them back into the proper dimension. So I'll do that with this one. But a good saw, somebody asked me what I thought of it and I think it's an excellent saw, but it's one of them things where I think, uh, you know, it's it's so good, the likelihood is they ain't gonna keep making them like that. You know, they gotta get fancy, newer, but this is a great saw. Just a little heavier than the old 55, which is a tremendous saw.